Hi, this is Joe Cronin. I'm a software applications engineer here with Alpha Technologies. And today we are going to go through the process of creating a test in Enterprise Online Manager. Creating and configuring tests are a core component of Enterprise Online Manager, and defining test me methods properly is integral to obtaining optimal results. In Online Manager, you simply click on the Test Setup tab, and then the Test button to open up the test form. This form consists of two tabs, one for tests and one for test groups. You should use the test tab for creating and managing test methods and test groups for managing groups of tests. For our presentation today, we will be working with the test tab. Enterprise is designed to have tests defined by instrument type and then by test type. For example, you might select an MDR as your instrument type and then set the test type to a cure test. This type of organization allows you to filter results by instrument type when searching. Tests are defined for specific instrument types in enterprise. The creation of tests involves defining the test, setting the appropriate variables along with their default values and units of measure, and other options which are dependent upon the instrument type. The test creation process will take you through four forms test definition, variable settings, charts, and curves. In some cases, depending on the instrument type, there may be an additional form for multiple testers. After clicking the new button to start the process, you will be limited to using only the test definition form until after some basic defining information has been entered and saved. Working from top to bottom, the test definition form will first present you with dropdowns for the owner of the test and the instrument type. Note the color of the field titles. Those in red are required fields and those in black are optional. Your own needs will determine how many of the fields you will utilize. Below owner and instrument type dropdowns are a series of text fields topped by the only required fields on this form, the name and type fields. The name field can hold up to 50 characters and the type holds up to 80 characters. Entering information in these two fields will allow you to save the test and enable the other forms. So we'll set the owner to admin. We'll set our instrument type to an MDR 2000. We'll set our test to a cure. And the type will also be cure. Below owner and instrument type dropdown are a series of text fields topped by the only required fields on this form, the name and type fields. The name field can hold up to 50 characters and the type holds up to 80 characters. Entering information in these two fields will allow you to save the test and enable the other two forms. Other information you may want to enter to further define the test include two description fields, each with 80, 80 character limits, as well as text fields, code, norm, and cost. There are also a pair of drop downs for location, typically used for the lab's location, and a preferred preparation. The code field was provided to allow you to enter the legacy standard 32 test procedure name for this test purposes of the other fields should be self-explanatory. The bottom area of the, this section of the form includes entry fields for version, stage count, and replication, as well as check boxes for obsoleting the test and to set it for auto-validation. Finally, at the bottom of the form are a pair of boxes. You may use these boxes to assign specific variables to the test. The box on the right contains a list of all the var available variables for the instrument type chosen at the top of the form. You can move the variables needed for the test by clicking the Add button, which moves them to the left side. You can multi-select the variables in the, you know, either box by holding the Control key and clicking on them. There's also a Remove button to allow you to remove any variable from the left side box. It is worth noting that there are several buttons at the top of the form which will appear after the test has been saved. You may use these buttons to duplicate the test with the copy button, to export the test definition to an XML file for either offline editing or moving the test to a different system. And there's also a delete button. The cancel button will take you back to the test search and list screen. 
Note that some of these buttons, and delete in particular, may not be available to you depending on your user rights within Enterprise. Once you're done with the test definition tab and have saved your work, you can move on to the other form to continue defining the test. Let's take a look at the variable settings form. Only the variables previously selected in the text definition form will appear on the variable settings form, so it's important to ensure you have moved all the necessary variables and saved before moving to this form. Variable settings form allows you to enter captions, default values, variable units, and set the decimal precision for each variable in the test. The default caption for each variable, as defined in the test setup variables form, can be overridden using the caption field. If the caption is displayed in blue on the form, that indicates the caption matches the default value. A second caption field has been included and works similarly. A possible use for the second caption could include displaying the caption in a second or local language. The tag field is designed for, for use when certain instrument interfaces are used to exchange test information with an instrument. The default value field should be used to set a default value for the given variable is useful for temperature and time set points, among other things. For many variables, leaving this field blank may be desirable. The unit of measure provides you via a drop-down list with a type-appropriate list of choices for the variable. For example, with test time, you would be able to choose between time units such as minutes, seconds, hours, and so forth. A torque variable would have choices such as decanewton meters or pounds per square inch. With test time, you would be able to choose between time units such as minutes, seconds, hours, and so forth, while a torque variable would have choices appropriate to that particular variable. The last item on the top line of the variable settings is a drop down box that allows you to choose the number of decimal places you'd like to store in your test results. You can enter negative values to use this field to set the number of significant. Each variable includes a wide array of checkboxes below the entry fields. These checkboxes allow you to set options for the variable. Moving left to right and top to bottom, these include use default value, which sets the default value for the variable system's default value. Persistent save value tells the system to use the user's entered default value for the next test. Save this variable to database ensures that the variable's value is written to the database when test results are saved. Display the variable ensures this variable's value will appear when displaying test results. Allow editing allows the operator to set the value while the test is running. Required will prevent saving of results unless this variable's value is entered. Include in reports will ensure the variable is included in enterprise reports. Show an outline view. We'll display the variable in the outline view of the workbench application. Show in trend chart will include the variable when displaying trend results. Edit editable when without import will allow set points to be changed when a work order is imported from another system. Exclude from spec will prevent the variable from being included in a specification created from this test. And include and export is designed to be used with third-party applications and has no direct use within Enterprise itself. There are also three checkboxes at the top of the form to the right of the test name. Show info fields allows you to display a multi-line text field. This could be used to change a calculation on a calculated variable or to show the choices for a menu type variable. Show manual entry min max allows you to enter a minimum and maximum value. Show variable map will display a map of the variables for this test. As always, should you forget to save your changes when attempting to leave this form, Enterprise will remind you that you need to save or cancel the changes. The charts form allows you to set up charts you'd like to have when viewing the test results. You can have up to four charts per test. There is a group of four boxes numbered one through four at the upper left of this form, which is where you can activate the chart by clicking the chart box beside its number. By clicking on the box itself, you select that chart for editing. Each chart window can be configured to display up to five different curves, 
all sharing the same x-axis. The x-axis may typically be used for time as an impure test, but could also, as an example, be used for different frequencies in a frequency suite. To configure each curve, you first select it in the top left corner of the window. Then you use the drop down to set the x axis and min and max values. The log checkbox can also be used to have the curve drawn in logarithmic sections. You can also use auto scale up and down to ensure that if the curve falls outside the maximum or minimum respectively, a new max or minimum will be calculated. Of note is the color drop down box. For the x-axis, the color value determines the background of the chart. For the other axes, the color drop-down will determine the color of the curve. You are provided with 16 different color variations. There's a checkbox on the x-axis for an x offset, which is designed primarily for tensile tests, where it may be desirable to see the specimen curves beside each other for comparison purposes. The setting is only used when the curves are over three. After setting up the x-axis, you may set five curves on the y axis. Many of the functionalities are identical to those of the x axis. Selection of the variable to be used, a minimum and min maximum for scale, and so forth. The y axis also has a marker drop down to allow you to place shaped markers on the curve to make identifying the curve easier when it has been printed on paper. There are six shapes from which to choose. There is also an include in COR checkbox, which you may desire to use as the curves appear on complete order reports, which are generated via the order or work order editors. It is also possible to have the curves be overtraced the workbench. Select that option by clicking the checkbox for each curve you'd like to have overtraced. This will keep the curves on the screen and workbench and a new test is run with the same material. The older curve will be faded and the new curve drawn over it, making it, easy to, making it easy to determine if there are significant differences. Finally, you can set the thickness of the curve's line by entering a value in the line thickness field at the far right. As always, be sure to save your work before moving to one of the other tabs or forms in Enterprise. The next form is the curve settings form. This window allows you to have more refined control over the curves that are saved as part of test results. Many of the settings on this form will seem familiar if you recently used the variable settings form. You can elect to change the caption for a curve, add a second caption and or a tag, and set the unit of measure. You can also determine how many decimal points to use in the measurement. Finally, there's a drop-down menu for reduction. This allows you to compress or remove entirely the data stored in the database for each curve in the test. The system saves curve data to the database to allow curves to recalculate the data. You can turn this off by selecting Do Not Store from the reduction drop-down. The other selections range from none to 10%. The amount of reduction that will be appropriate for a given curve depends on the number of data points selected during the test. An algorithm is applied that will compare sets of three data points, looking for those that can be removed without greatly changing the shape of the curve. Note that some reductions may occur automatically in long tests as the system is designed to prevent memory issues from collecting too many points of the data. There's a multiple step in the form, which is locked out for most instruments, but typically only applies to performance which are designed to test multiple samples and then compare to find a median which is stored as the test result. There is a multiple specimen form, which is locked out for most instruments as it typically only applies for some instruments such as pencil testers, which are designed to test multiple samples and then compare to find a median which is stored as the test result. Multiple specimen form allows you to disable multiple specimen testing or to set the number of specimens to be tested. This is done with simple check boxes, one to enable multiple specimens, and another to store single specimen results. You can also set the number of specimens and the 
type of calculation for the system to perform. That completes all the forms available to you for the creation and definition of a test. There's also a history tab, which is activated as soon as a test is saved for the first time. Enterprise creates and maintains a change log for each test, and the contents of that log can be found here on the history tab. The information stored includes the database table, the record ID, which can be a variable name for instance, the time and date of the change, the name of the field, and both the original value and the new value. There is also an e-sign field, should that be something that your organization wishes to utilize. That completes our presentation of how you create a test within the Enterprise Online Manager. This is Joe Cronin from Alpha Technologies. Thank you for listening and viewing our presentation today, and I hope you've picked up some valuable information to use when you set up your tests in Enterprise Online Manager.